guys, welcome back to Cool School. We put together a very magical group of videos for you, and I'm so excited for you to see them. <laughs> we have genies, magic pens, magic beans, magic horses, and so much more magic. <laughs> and did I mention magic? First, here's Rumpelstiltskin. Remember that one? There were magical golden bricks and a baby who saves the day. Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. Today's story is Rumpelstiltskin. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's go. Long, long ago, there was a dad, and he had a kid. A daughter, actually. <gasps> That's me. <laughs> Together, we made fine designer clothing. The clothes we made were so fancy that the king wanted to wear them. The clothes you make are fantastic. Ah, oh, gee, thank you, king. Thanks a whole kit and caboodle. But my daughter's the real artist. She's so delicate when she's spinning, I bet she could spin straw into gold. Well, as you might know, kings like gold. They like gold a lot. Gold, you say? Hmm. I'd like to meet this daughter of yours. Send her to my castle for brunch this Sunday. We'll have melba toast and salmon locks. So that Sunday, I went to the king's castle for brunch. But instead of melba toast and salmon locks, oh, I got horse hay and dungeon locks. Oh dear, the king locked me away in the dungeon. You can come out once you spin all this straw into gold. I didn't actually know how to spin straw into gold. That was just a figure of speech. Somebody please help me! Why, hello there. A little elf man appeared. I see you need to sew some straw into gold. That happens to be my specialty. Mm, that's pretty random. <laughs> but okay. I don't have much, but I'll give you anything. Hmm, how about that necklace of yours? It's very pretty. And even though this necklace was a gift for my BFF Snow White, I made the deal. I couldn't be stuck in this stinky dungeon forever. The elf man worked his magic. He sang while he worked, which was kind of annoying, but he was helping me out. <laughs> when the king came back in the morning, the hay was gone, and in its place, pure gold. The king was utterly flabbergasted. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Well, I'm pretty good at this, uh, obviously. <laughs> good, I want more. So this time I'm going to give you 100 times the hay. If you can spin it all to gold by morning, I will let you out. But if not, you will be sent out into the ocean on a leaky ship, never to return. Oh, and the ship will be full of singing mice who are terrible singers. <laughs> now get back to sewing. Mean? So night came and I didn't know what else to do. So I, I called out. Uh, hey, magic little dude. Um, I forgot your name, but I, uh, I need you. So, you need more help, do ya? I do. I do. I do. It's gonna cost you. Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Pinky promise. Again, he sang as he worked. Spinning, sewing, gold glowing, taking hay and making it pay. It took all night, and I got seriously tired of that song. But my little friend sewed every last bit of straw into gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How much do I owe you? On the night of your first son's first birthday, I will return to take him as my own. And he <laughs> laughed all crazy like and oh, disappeared. Wait, what? He didn't say he was going to take my son on his first birthday, did he? Nah, that would be crazy. The next day, the king saw all that gold, and he was so excited, he let me go. So fast forward a bit. I'm in charge of my own designer clothing company. I'm married, I have a super cool house, a dog and a cat. I had forgotten all about the little elf who had spun straw into gold. I was living happily ever after. Until the night of my first son's first birthday. We were all celebrating, having a great time, when the little old elf crashed the party. Here I am. Give me that baby. Okay, funny story. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Not really. You made a pinky promise. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I 
can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. But if you don't, I'll take him and your first daughter. Do we have a deal? I began to guess. Paul, no, Mike, no, Mark, no, Sean. Uh -uh. Sean spelled S E A N. Nope. Sean spelled S H A U N. Not even close. Mm, Tim, nope. Tom, nope. Tyler, nope. Taylor, uh -uh. Kanye, Dragon. Senior, nope. Junior. No. Nope. Oh, nope. I guessed hundreds of names, hundreds upon hundreds of names, but I just couldn't come up with it. To make matters worse, the horrible little elf was leaning over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. That's my job. I'll have a son, I'm gonna win. She'll never guess my name, cause it's Rumpelstiltskin. Just then, the baby giggled and spoke his very first word. He said, Rumpelstiltskin. Everyone was so excited, as they always are when babies say their first words. What did he say? Nothing. Um, I think he wants his bottle. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, no. <laughs> but seriously, we called the police a long time ago anyway. <laughs> you think you're just gonna come in here and take my baby? I'm his mom. <laughs> you're a bad elf and you're going to jail. And so we were free from Rumpelstiltskin forever. So my family went on a vacation cruise to celebrate and the mice on this ship were excellent singers. <laughs> the brunch buffet was pretty good too. Smoked salmon with poi-fection, mwah! The end. Well, that was fun. Hi, Hi Miss Bussie. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, Miles. Uh, Hi, Harry. Miss Bussie, hey, 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 we have a new student. This is Katie. Uh, well, hi, Katie. Welcome to story time. Hi, Miss Booksy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Aladdin and the Magical Lamp. Aladdin the Dinosaur. Um, no, <laughs> not quite. Aladdin and the Magical Lamp. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there lived a totally awesome dude named Aladdin. Oh, wow, hey, I'm a totally awesome dude named Aladdin. <laughs> awesome, yes, but also very unlucky. Huh? Aladdin was always getting into trouble, like the time he accidentally stowed away on a pirate ship. Huh? Oh, that's a long way down. <laughs> oh, I like your hat. <laughs> or like the time he got swallowed by a whale. Oh, they got you too, huh? No, I quite like it in here. Yeah, I don't believe you. Or, like this one time, he almost met a really cool princess, which, by the way, was a huge no-no. You see, the princess's father was a very bad king, and he wouldn't let the princess even talk to any of the poor townspeople. But Aladdin bravely walked up and said, Hi, I'm Aladdin, and you must be Princess... Whoa! A tiger! A tiger! A tiger! Run, Aladdin, run! <laughs> <laughs> if only I could find a clever place to hide. Whoa, hey! Huh. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, a cave. Huh. That was close. <laughs> Aladdin quietly crept further into the cave just to be totally 100% sure that the tiger couldn't find him. Only problem was, it was... Dark! Who turned out the lights? Jeez, I can't even see my... Whoa! I wish I had a nightlight. Did somebody say, I wish? <laughs> wow, how did that happen? Woo. Hey, who are you? I am a genie, but you can call me Bob. You, uh, you fell on my lamp, must have uh, rubbed it a little bit, because that's how these things work. Oh, and bonus, I'm also a magician. Want to see me pull a rabbit out of my hat? Oh yeah, I love magic. Alakazambra Kapow. <laughs> uh, rabbit spell go. Hola, kids. Bunny Kazam! Ah, oh, put it back in there! Put it back in there! Put it back in there! Oh, 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 sorry, put it sorry. Back in there. It's a small cave. Sorry. Oh, and you have two more wishes, by the way. Two more wishes? Mm -hmm. Sounds. But be careful what you wish for. Not every wish is a good one. Well, I'm going to wish for true love with the most beautiful girl in the world. 
The princess. She's so cool. I heard she has a trampoline and a pool and a golden retriever and an Xbox. She's so neat. I'm just going to wish to get a chance to hang out with her. I wish... Uh, be careful what you wish for. I wish for a chance to hang out with the princess. Uh-oh. <laughs> you wish to hang out with the princess, so you're hanging out. And that's the end of part one. Talk about a cliffhanger. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Aladdin has just wished to hang out with the princess. And as you can see, they're quite literally hanging out. You wish to hang out with the princess, so you're hanging out. Well, I didn't mean to hang out the window. <sighs> Don't get mad at me. Next time, be more specific. <sighs> um, hello. A little less talking, a little more rescuing. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Ahem. I'll save you, princess. <sighs> okay. How do I do that, Baba? A little help here. Well, I have to say, I wish. And use my last wish? Well, you could try some magic. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alakazam! Uh, oh, there's my bunny. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, Abracadabra! Oh, that's not right. Oh, I wish I could save Aladdin and the princess. <laughs> Okay, that worked. Hmm. Cool. I did not know I could grant my own wishes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so crazy. Oh, totally. It's so weird. I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> Wait a minute. I recognize you. I I've seen you before. You're Aladdin. <laughs> and who is this? Oh, 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 oh no, oh no. The jig is up. Uh, 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 he's a genie, uh, and his name is Bob. And he. And so Aladdin explained the whole situation about Bob the genie and the wishes. He told the princess he really just wanted to get to know her and hang out and probably play video games just for a bit. Maybe use the castle pool and water slide and trampoline for a few times. No big deal. But he really just wanted her to like him. And I understand if you want me to leave. Oh, I suppose I can use my last wish to just get out of here if that's what you want. Wait, you have a last wish? Yeah. <gasps> hey, we could share the wish. Huh, anything you want to do. We could go to Egypt and see the pyramids or go to Mars or to Disneyland. You guys ever been to Space Mountain? And they got this whole new Frozen section. I am so there. Miss Booksy, Miss Booksy, can I be in the story now? I want to go to Disneyland with Aladdin and the princess, too. <laughs> sure, of course you can. Let's go. Just wiggle your nose and snap your fingers like this. I have to bring my little sister, Katie. She loves Disney. Yeah. <laughs> we can go to the Bippity Boppity Boutique. <laughs> we, <laughs> I'll be at the Hall of Presidents. And that's how it all went down, kids. Aladdin and the princess, they really liked each other. They didn't need any love spells or riches. They were like two peas in a pod. They were like ice cream and hot fudge. They were like hamburgers and pickles. <laughs> Pizza and liver. Yeah! Okay, fine. You get the idea. <laughs> they liked each other. And this is the best part, kids. They all lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's the end of the story for today, you guys. Did you have a good time? Oh, yeah. yeah! We sure did! My School Project is about horses and ponies. There are so many different types of horses and ponies. Magic horses like unicorns and pegasus, talking horses, walking horses, wild yeah. horses, racing horses, earth ponies, crystal ponies. I could go on forever. But hey, hey is for horses. So what do horses and ponies like to eat? Hay and carrots. And some ponies even like to eat cake. Mmm, cake. Horses and ponies live in all kinds of places. Some live in a land called Equestria. Some live on farms. Some live in the city. Some live in the sea. OK, so seahorses aren't really real horses, but they're so cool. Thanks. Maybe they hang out with narwhals. Narwhals have horns just like unicorns. I wonder if they're cousins. Hi, meet my cousin Narwhal. Hi. What do horses and ponies like to do? Some like to fly. Some like to just go 
round and round in circles. Some are rocking horses. No, not that kind of rocking horse. There we go. Some horses like to hang out with princesses, but sometimes ponies are princesses. Hm, I wonder what unicorns like to do. Oh, I bet they like to pop balloons. Naughty unicorns. Sometimes people ride on horses, like cowboys. I don't know why they don't just call them horse boys. They're not riding cows. In olden days, mailmen used to ride horses super duper fast all across the country to deliver letters. That was called the Pony Express. Jockeys ride horses in big races like the Kentucky Derby. Sometimes people ride in horses. Lots of horses and ponies have names, like Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, Little Sebastian, Mr. Ed, Seabiscuit, not a seahorse like you might think, Bullseye and Buttercup. But if I had a horse or pony or unicorn, I would totally give it an awesome name like Princess of Thunder or Fiery Cupcake. What would you name your horse or pony? Say in the comments. So pretty much horses and ponies and unicorns and pegasus and alicorns are all really cool and we should all have our own pet pony. The end. Well, hey there, boys and girls. It's me, Crafty Carol, here today with a brand new craft here at Cool School. There, oh my goodness, I think you just broke the sound barrier, AKA my eardrums. But I don't <laughs> mind because that just means you're excited about crafts. And we're excited about yelling. Are you also excited about dragons? <gasps> what kind of dragon? Oh, does it breathe fire? Oh, well, I certainly hope not. I was thinking more like a cool dragon from Maleficent or oh. How to Train Your Dragon, you know, one like that. Okay, so we're going to make our very own dragon craft with these supplies right here. Oh, well, I yeah. was kind of hoping we'd make a real life dragon that breathes fire, but this, this will be good too. Well, this dragon will still be really cool. It just won't be super dangerous. And it won't breathe fire. I can breathe fire. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> My goodness, it's getting hot in here oh, with yeah. all the fire breathing kids. <laughs> so uh, I think we better make this dragon craft before we all melt. <laughs> well, actually, I'm, I'm not even allowed to play with fire. Okay, in truth, I can't really breathe fire. Yeah, yeah he made it up. Well, that's probably a good thing because then you'd be super scary to talk to. I can tell what you want to know right now is what we need to make this craft. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so we're going to need an egg box, Whoa. regular cardboard egg box there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're going to need paint, some colored paper, tissue paper, glue. You need a stapler, two sticks. Got these right here. And, uh, you know, just some fun little uh, little doodads and things. Oh, I like doodads. We already painted our egg box. We're saving some time. Painted it black, like Toothless or Maleficent. And we already cut out and attached a piece for the eyes. Wow. See? Just like so. Now, that? you can give your dragon any kind of eyes you want. Let's give our dragon googly eyes. <laughs> I think that's an excellent idea. <laughs> so, I uh, just happen to have some wow. right here. Okay, oh. so just attach those. Oh my goodness, we're already we're already cooking with gas. Googly dragon, yeah. all right. Googly eyes right there. I think that dragon also needs a tongue so oh. he can taste yeah. his, oh, uh, yes. his pizza. So I'm just gonna put it in there. What about ears? Like long ones like mine. Oh, ears. Oh, yeah. You can do ears. Yeah. Oh, oh, or a bow tie, because oh. bow ties are cool. <laughs> oh, what's a dragon without a bow tie? Or a hat. Or a hat. Or, a hat. or you could do a little hat. Do a hat. Oh, okay. Oh, what about a mustache? Or shark fin. Oh, or a suit of armor. Or a ninja suit. Or a cape. Or a jetpack. Yeah. yeah. Well, these are all really awesome ideas. I gave our dragon a little tongue and dragon mane. That kind of looks like a shark's fin. Yeah. I'd be scared of this. I'm scared. Yeah, swimming scary. in the ocean and saw this coming. Yeah. I'd get out of the water. So next step, we take our tissue paper here that we've got. Yeah. This is going to be the dragon's body. And it's Ooh. super simple. Just Ooh, put it up wow. in there. Wow, holy so cow. Look at we're kind of almost there, you guys. You know what we can do next? Oh, oh eat ice cream? Oh, huh? well, that's not what I was going to say, but oh. good guess. I do love ice cream. Oh, hey, 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 Crafty Carol. Yeah, I want one. Have you ever heard this? I scream. You scream. 
Uh, we all scream for ice cream. Ah! I love ice cream. If a dragon ate ice cream, I think it would melt. Yeah. I wonder if a dragon ate an egg, if it would automatically be a fried egg. Oh. Okay, I think we're ready for the last step. So we just take the other end of our mm -hmm. tissue paper here, and we're gonna wrap it around this stick. Pretty simple so far, and oh, we're gonna yeah. staple it. And then you take your other stick, uh -huh. yeah. and stick it right in there. <laughs> oh, and, that looks oh, like it hurts. And you know what, I almost didn't notice. We got ourselves a dragon here. Boys and girls, this dragon craft is super duper easy and super fun. Hi guys, my name is Judy. And I'm Benji. And these are our baby bears, Kira and Mia, of It's Judy's Life. And today we're here at Cool School for the Story Circle. And today we're gonna be reading you Jack and the Beanstalk. You guys ready? <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jack. Jack lived with his mom in a small town where nothing exciting ever happened. It was so boring that the number one pastime was watching paint dry. Every Saturday, Jack's mom would send him to the market in a neighboring town to get groceries. This particular Saturday, Jack went and spent all the grocery money on just three little beans. These are no ordinary beans, they're magic beans. Do you like magic? Yeah! Well then you're gonna love these beans. And just like that, he snatched Jack's money and was gone in a puff of smoke. He did disappear like a magician, so the beans must be magical. Jack ran home super duper excited about the magic beans. He showed his mom. She didn't believe in magic and she scolded Jack. Then she threw the beans right out the window. But good thing she did because that night, the beans grew into a giant beanstalk. It went all the way up to the sky. Just imagine, if they had grown like that inside the house, that would have been messy. This was the first exciting thing that had ever happened in their town, so everybody came to look. But Jack was the only one brave enough to climb up to the top. When he reached the very tip top, he saw a whole new world where everything was huge! It was like a place for giants! He felt so small here, he was the same size as a mouse! It was a little scary being that small, but he had to go explore. Whoa! They had a giant TV? It was like a movie theater screen! Cool! Just then the floor started to rumble. Was it an earthquake? Eek! It was a real live giant! Fee fi fo fum! I smell the feet of a little one! Hey! My feet don't stink! Then he remembered he was very tiny compared to this giant. So maybe now wasn't the best time to argue. But the giant had already heard him. Although to him it sounded more like this. And just to be perfectly honest, Jack's feet were a little stinky. But that's beside the point. The giant had found Jack! He ran to the beanstalk. He slid down faster than that one time when he went down the big water slide at Six Flags. Phew, he made it. But not before the giant saw the beanstalk, and that was bad. That was very, very bad. You see, the giants who lived up in the clouds had never had a way to get down to the earth below where all the people live. But now they had a big beanstalk to climb up and down whenever they wanted. Now Jack's town was like the giant's downstairs rec room, full of snacks and amusement. Luckily, the giants were vegetarians, so no one had to worry about being eaten. But they did have to worry about being smashed. The giants loved Jack's little town. They ran around and played tag, which caused a lot of rumbling and shaking and made a very big mess. The giants also thought the humans were adorable and they started to treat them like little pets, putting funny sweaters on them and naming them things like Mr. Fluffy and Bingo. Pretty little pet. We have to get rid of these giants. Fee fi fo fum, I tickle you on your tum tum. Jack and the other townsfolk held a meeting to discuss how to get rid of these giants. I say we build a giant trap. That would take weeks. How about we all just move? We're going to have to cut down the beanstalk. Chopping down the beanstalk does no good if the giants are still down here, squashing all the real estate, and eating all the corn. And calling me Fluffykins. Yeah, they'd be down here forever, no thanks. Okay, okay, so we just have to get them all back up there at once. I have a plan. 
we're going to need a very big saw, a parachute, and all the cute stuff we can find. Jack's plan started with all the townspeople hiding in their basement. Jack put on the most annoyingly adorable stuff the giant had been making people wear. He put on a fuzzy sweater with a smiley face that lit up, a little hat with bells, bunny slippers, pants that had my little ponytail, and a bib that said, I'm the baby, gotta love me. Then he ran out into the town square and yelled out, Hey, look how cute I am. I am so cute. Whoever catches me gets to keep me as their pet forever. Well, the giants thought he was so adorable. They went to scoop him up, but he was too fast. Catch me if you can. The giggling giants chased Jack all through town, past Jack's house, and right up the beanstalk. He ran around until the very last giant followed him up the stalk. Once they were all there, he ran to the edge of the giant world and jumped. This is where the parachute came in handy. Jack sailed through the sky, and the townspeople took that as their cue to chop. The mayor shouted, Mr. Lumberjack, tear down that stock. The townspeople cheered as the stock teetered and wobbled. The lumberjack yelled out, Timber! And the big beanstalk crashed to the ground. Jack landed, and everyone hoisted him up on their shoulders, chanting, Yay, Jack! Yay, Jack! The giant beanstalk turned the town into a huge tourist attraction. Looky loos from all over the world wanted to come and see the big stock and the brave hero who defeated the giants. The end. So what did you guys think? Did you like that? It's time for a brand new adventure of Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. In today's adventure, Drew must save the fall. It was a crisp November day, perfect for drinking warm apple cider and jumping in piles of leaves, when suddenly the sky grew dark and it started to snow. Hey, it's not supposed to snow yet. It's only November. I'm obviously trying to play outside here. Suddenly, it became a blizzard. Brrr. Now have you gone too far, Winter? I want fall. Drew knew what must be done. First, I'm going to need an awesome looking snowsuit and something to melt snow, like lightning. Yeah, I designed these goggles to shoot lightning bolts. Cool. Now I'll just add a rocket fuel snowboard that can fly and boom. Winter, say hello to Super Drew. Super Drew melted the snow with his white hot lightning, but more snow kept falling faster and colder. He couldn't melt the snow fast enough. That's it, here I come. Drew flew straight up into the sky like a rocket. Brrr, too cold. Drew flew over the snow clouds to the tip top of the highest mountain. He spotted the culprit. It was Jack Frost. Aha! I've caught you white handed, Jack. What's with all the snow? It's only November and it's a Saturday, which means I don't even get a snow day. It's not me. I'm trying to stop it. Then who's doing this? I am. <laughs> Drew was confused. This guy looked exactly like Jack Frost, except he had a funny little beard and he wore a black leather jacket. My evil twin brother. That's right, kids. It was Jimmy Freeze, Jack Frost's evil twin from another dimension. He looked like Jack, but instead of nipping at your nose and leaving pretty little ice crystals on your window, he did mean things. Yeah, I'm the guy who makes the playground all icy, so you can't go out for recess. <laughs> One time, he even knocked over a kid's snowman for no reason. <laughs> yup, that was me. And now I'm going to make it snow forever. <laughs> no, you're not. Drew sketched a ginormous snowblower to send Jimmy's snow backwards into space. But Jimmy shot Drew's snowblower with ice. Freeze. <laughs> he was frozen solid, kids, like a popsicle. Mm, Sorry, mm, mm, what was that? Mm, I can't mm, hear you. Mm, mm. But wait, look, Drew was melting the ice from inside with his lightning goggles. But Jimmy Freeze didn't notice because he was too busy being a meanie. It isn't nice to laugh at people, Jimmy Freeze. Huh? I can't believe you're my brother. Jack Frost helped him throw Jimmy into the sling and they catapulted him into space. See you never, Jimmy. Stupendous Drupendous and his mighty penultimate save the day, kids! With a little help from his friend, Jack Frost. See you in December, Drew! Perfect! And remember, I love it when it snows on school days. And make sure the snow is good for packing, not too powdery. You got it! 
Back in Drew's backyard, the snow had all melted. Drew celebrated by jumping around in a big pile of leaves. It was an awesome fall day. And the moral of the story, kids, don't be mean and never knock over a little kid's snowman. And be glad you don't have an evil twin. I'm sure glad I don't. Or do I? My school project is about witches. This is a witch. We know it's a witch because of a few things. First, the pointy black hat. Hey, give me back my hat! Here you go. Thank you. Most, if not all witches, have a pointy hat. But not all people with pointy hats are witches. <laughs> the next thing we look for in a witch is the green skin. Don't you look at my skin. I'll be green if I want to. But not all things with green skin are witches. <coughs> Another thing we look for in a witch is a long crooked nose with a wart on top. You leave my nose alone. I like it. There's nothing wrong with a long nose because not everything with a long nose is a witch. And last, we know it's a witch if it's doing magic, especially while riding a broomstick. And mixing things in a cauldron. And so, in conclusion, if she has a pointy hat, green skin, a long crooked nose with a wart on top, and she's doing magic while riding a broomstick, well then, you are correct. Your sister is definitely a witch. It's time for a brand new adventure of Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. In today's adventure, Drew must save Christmas. It was Christmas Eve, everything was perfect. Stockings were hung by the fire, snow was falling, hot cocoa was being sipped. And the best part was Drew had created a Santa detector. As soon as Santa takes off from the North Pole, I'll get a signal. Then I'll track him. I'll know the moment he comes down our chimney. I'm finally gonna meet Santa! Drew waited and waited and waited. Finally, there it was. Santa's sleigh was in flight. Woohoo, it's story time! But then it stopped. Oh no! Then Drew's tracker lost the sleigh signal completely. Santa was Gone. This isn't good. I gotta find out what's going on. I'm going to the North Pole. Hot dog, you're coming with me. Away we go. Let's save Christmas. Drew and Hot Dog, the reindeer pup, flew to the North Pole. Drew found the spot where he last detected Santa's sleigh. This just looks like a scary cave. Where's Santa? <laughs> what is it, Hot Dog? You know where Santa is? <laughs> Let's go! They flew past some candy cane trees and over Eggnog Lake, and there it was! Whoa! Santa's toy shop! Cool! Drew and Hot Dog went inside. Something was wrong. There were Santa's elves all crying their eyes out. Hey guys, what happened? A very bad elf kidnapped all the reindeer and tied up Santa! <laughs> we wanted to save him, but we're too short to reach. And the tag said don't open till Christmas Day. Well, I'm the stupendous stupendous, and I'm here to save Christmas. Oh, 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 thanks, Drew. No problem, Santa. I'm a huge fan, but we gotta get you out there delivering toys. It's late. But I'm useless without my reindeer. You can use mine. Hot dog is pretty fast. He's cute, but I need at least eight. How about robot reindeer? I'm kind of scared of robots. Got anything else? Drew didn't expect Santa to be so picky. Then he had the perfect idea. He sketched a rocket engine to Santa's sleigh. Santa, you take this and start delivering toys. I'll go find reindeer and meet up with you, okay? Okay, but I've never flown a rocket before. <laughs> I think I'm getting the hang of it. Okay, now let's find these reindeer. The elves told him about a cave where the evil elf hid out, doing things an elf should never do, like breaking toys and making a mess. Okay, evil elf, come up with your hands up. Nothing happened. Drew was going to have to go into the dark cave. 
He needed a light, a flashlight, or maybe even a... Uh, Rudolph nose! Even better! With his shiny red nose, Drew entered the cave. Then he saw Santa's reindeer, all tied up! There was Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donna, and Blitzen! Drew was just about to get them out when he was pelted with a gumdrop! And then another one! And another one! <laughs> Joke's on you, evil elf! I love gumdrops! Well, do you love presents? Because you're not gonna get any this year! Santa's all tied up! <laughs> Actually, he's flying around in a rocket delivering toys as we speak. What? So I'll just take these reindeers and get going. Not so fast. The evil elf started to tie up Drew, laughing her annoying <laughs> evil elf laugh. <laughs> Ouch! Get off of me, you reindeer dog thing! Super Drew grabbed his penultimate and sketched a giant gift off. box around the bad elf, and he filled out the tag. To the North Pole County Jail, one bad elf from the stupendous, stupendous, and hot dog. Now let's find Santa. Giddy up. It didn't take long for them to spot him. Oh, thank goodness you found my reindeer. This definitely puts you on the nice list. Can I ride around with you and help me deliver presents? Please, 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 please. Sure you can. Ho, ho, ho. They flew from house to house delivering toys and goodies to all the boys and girls of the world. Whenever there was a house without a chimney, Drew would just draw one with his penultimate. Santa! Oh, who are you? I'm the stupendous stupendous, and I helped save Christmas. Is it cool if we take some of these cookies, please? Uh, I guess so. Thanks again, Drew. You're a hero. No problem, Santa. High five. The next morning, kids everywhere woke up and found presents under their tree. The tags all said from Santa and the stupendous Drewpendous and Hot Dog. And the moral of the story, kids, stay away from bad elves. And Santa is definitely real, but he's not so great at flying a rocket ship. Whoa! Hi kids, it's Cool School Story Time. Miss Booksy here. <laughs> is everybody ready? Yeah! You don't sound ready. I said, is everybody ready? Yeah! <laughs> Great. Today's story is Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Jack. So Jackie, that's me. I lived with my mom. To make our living, we had a cow whose milk we sold for money. Let's just say we weren't rich. One day, Bessie stopped making milk. She was an old cow, ready for retirement. Maybe she wanted to move to Florida. She had some friends down there, fulfilling their milk bucket list. Mom told me we would have to sell Bessie. We had no choice. So the next day, I led my dear old friend, Bessie, to the town square. <laughs> On the way, we ran into an old wolf who told me he'd love to take Bessie. May I offer an interesting trade for your bovine friend there? No, sir. I need to sell her. Okay. I guess you don't want these magic beans. What kind of beans? Because I don't like lima beans or pinto beans. I said magic beans, kid. They're totally magic and are worth more than you're ever going to get for that old dried up cow. If you're not interested in these very valuable very magical, exotic, and definitely totally real beans. I'll find someone else. I'll take them. Wow, with magic beans, I could, I could. What? Oh no, I didn't ask how they worked. Oh man. I got home and hope my mom would just forget about the whole selling Bessie thing. I would just play it cool. Yeah. Magic beans? There's no such thing as magic! She was right. What were we supposed to do with three little beans? I tossed the beans out the window and headed up to bed. But that night, something amazing, dare I say magical, happened. A giant beanstalk had grown outside our window. What else do you do when you see a giant beanstalk? You climb it, duh. At the very tip top, just above the clouds, I saw a yard and a house. A big house. I was hungry for breakfast 
and I figured a big house like that would have some really big snacks. No puny fun sized candy bars here. I let myself into the giant house. Gosh, who lived here? A whole NBA team? There was a maid inside. She was normal size. What was she doing in such a giant house? I'll give you some table scraps and then off with you. She gave me a bit of bread. It looked like a big crumb, like a crumb from a giant sandwich. I stuffed the big breadcrumb into my knapsack, and just as I was about to leave, I heard, Fee, fee, foo, thinner. I think I smell my dinner. I hid, and I just saw the most giantest giant imaginable come in. Rub roll, was I for dinner? Also, not to nitpick, but it's technically breakfast time, but back to the issue at hand. There was a giant! He started to count a bunch of gold coins. He must have had like a million, nay, a jillion. I waited until the giant got up to go to the bathroom to take a giant bath. I grabbed a sack of gold and hightailed it to the beanstalk. Listen, I know stealing is wrong, but I thought maybe it would be okay because he had so many coins. He wouldn't mind. So I showed my mother. Young lady, you march back up there and give that man back his gold. There's no such thing as giants. So the next day, I went back up the beanstalk. I decided I would just leave the coins by the doorstep. And I saw the strangest thing, a golden goose, and it was laying golden eggs. Oh, Mom would never believe this. So I took a picture with my iPhone. <laughs> She'd have to believe me now. <laughs> I picked up one egg to get a few shots with me holding it. And then the goose started honking like a traffic jam. I had to scoot. Oh boy. Then I heard. Fee, five, four, this. Who the heck is bothering the goose? I had to get out of there. Why was I messing around on a giant's turf? I ran for it and skedaddled down the stalk. Unfortunately, I still had the egg. Oh, blarg. Mom saw it and told me to return it. There's no such thing as a golden goose. That egg is just a decoration. I've seen one just like it at Macy's. But I had an iPhone photo. So up I went. I was going to just set down the egg and leave. Simple as that. But then I saw the coolest treasure ever. A golden guitar. It started playing by itself. Cool. Wait a second, I recognize this guitar. I had seen a TV news story about Professor Skyens, a nice but strange inventor slash scientist guy who lived in our town. He had made a golden guitar. It was a gift for the mayor. It was on the news because it had been stolen. Wait a second, I'm not a thief. The giant's a thief. I was just gonna leave and call the police, but the guitar started playing again, loud. Mm, darn rock and roll. I ran like a cheetah. The giant, he started to chase me. Oh, he followed me right down the beanstalk. And that silly gold guitar was still twanging and riffing and totally shredding. My mom and some other townsfolk heard the racket and gathered around the beanstalk. Then my mom, one of the most gentle, nicest, sweetest little ladies in the world, she started chopping down the stalk with an axe. Wait till I get down there, Ma! I got close to the bottom and jumped. Just as she yelled, Timber! And thud, the giant fell. I told the townspeople about the stolen treasure up the beanstalk. The police arrested the giant and the fire department extended their ladders all the way up to the sky to go get the rest of the gold stuff. The mayor gave me a reward and we used it to buy a new cow. And my mom finally believed me that giants, golden geese, and magic are all real. It was a happy ending. And that's the end. My project is all about dragons. Dragons come in all different shapes and sizes, but all of them are awesome. They have wings, so they can fly through the air. They can even do tricks. Some dragons are really cute, like Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. Aw, he doesn't have any teeth. On the other hand, in Sleeping Beauty, Maleficent turns into a dragon with a whole bunch of teeth. It's probably tougher to use a toothbrush. Some dragons breathe fire. They do this to protect their gold or because they just ate a bunch of spicy chicken wings. Why does he even need all that gold? To buy more spicy chicken wings? 
Other dragons breathe ice. That's handy for when your ice cream is starting to melt. Thanks. Some dragons just have bad breath. That's the scariest breath of all. Maybe he needs to brush his teeth too. There are dragons that are big enough for you to ride on. And then there are dragons that are small enough to ride on you. Most kids love dragons. My older sister even likes them called Imagine Dragons. They don't look like regular dragons. I think they're radioactive or something, like Godzilla. Godzilla likes to step on buildings. He's not a really a dragon though, more of a dinosaur. We'll talk about dinosaurs later. For now, back to dragons. Dragons are used as symbols for a lot of things. Knights used to have dragons on their shields. During the Chinese New Year, you can see a dragon dance. No, not that kind of dragon dance. That's better. Some dragons are magic, but some are not. This list is starting to drag on. So in conclusion, dragons live in castles and lighthouses, up on mountains and down in caves. They can be cuter than a kitten and friendlier than a dog. Dragons can fly you to school so you don't have to take the bus. And that's why you should have a dragon as a pet. My cool school project is all about villains. Villains are people in stories and movies that behave badly. I refuse to clean my room. Not like deciding not to clean up your toys or having a tantrum in the frozen food aisle. Villains are really bad. Like they make up plans to rule everything. Uh oh. Villains also like to fight against superheroes like Ultron versus the Avengers just to make their evil plans happen. Villains are also known as the Lord of Evil, like Hans and Abadir, the Arch Enemy, like Spider-Man's Green Goblin, the Ultimate Mischief Maker, like Bowser from Super Mario, or just plain old bad guys. Is everybody ready to be bad? Yep, if you need any kind of mayhem or destruction, you can count on a villain to do the job. Most villains are lacking in the good looks department, some villains are part creature and part human, like Ursula from The Little Mermaid. And some villains have big, sharp teeth like Scar or the Big Bad Wolf. Some of them are just strange looking and wear weird costumes. Yeah, super weird. And this villain has two faces. That's just double weird. A lot of villains have superhuman powers to fight off the good guys, like Megatron and Sandman who change into other shapes, also known as shape-shifting. Others have the power of telepathy, which means they can use their thoughts to communicate without moving their lips. Take out the trash. <laughs> Never mind, I will do it myself. Not all villains have superhuman powers. Some are just super duper rich and can buy lots of powerful gadgets and hire a bunch of minions to do their dirty work. And then there are bad guys who are just so smart, they can invent things that help them take over the world. And some villains like wizards and witches don't need any fancy powers at all. They can cast evil spells using their magic wands and good old cauldrons. <laughs> Abracadabra, alakazam! Make this cat grumpy just like I am. <laughs> now. I think my favorite villain is Vector from Despicable Me. He's odd looking, has a private lair with pet sharks, and he's so smart. He steals the moon. He pretty much has all the characteristics that make a good villain. So who is your favorite villain? Tell us in the comments below. My cool school project is all about superheroes. Superheroes are awesome for like a million reasons, but mostly because they have superpowers. Some have super strengths. Some can fly, or go invisible, or read minds. Some superheroes are super fast, and some superheroes are just super duper smart. So where do they get their powers from? Well, some superheroes come from other planets, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Some are mutants, like X-Men. Some are radioactive, like Spider-Man. Some are built, like Baymax and Iron Man. And some get their powers from their parents, like the Incredibles. Whole families of superheroes! A lot of people know superheroes because they're famous and in movies and stuff. But they're also really easy to spot because they wear costumes. Superhero costumes usually have a cape, or a symbol, or they have underwear on the outside of their pants. I don't know what's so super about that. 
A lot of superheroes have secret identities or a special disguise, so no one knows their superhero secret. Sometimes my grandpa wears glasses when he's reading, but the rest of the time he doesn't need them. Maybe he's a secret superhero. I'm bopping away! Oh, my back! One thing every superhero needs is an arch nemesis. That means major enemy. Superman versus Lex Luthor, Spider-Man versus the Green Goblin, and Batman versus the Joker. Sometimes the superheroes team up and fight the bad guys together. Pow! Wham! Crush! Maybe instead of fighting, they should just talk to each other. Hey, I like your costume! Thanks! Superheroes are the good guys, but sometimes they have a bad day. Sometimes real life people are heroes. Even kids can be heroes. I think sometimes just doing something nice for somebody makes you a hero. To sum it up, superheroes are super cool and I want to be one when I grow up. My superpower would be invisibility, so I can sneak in the kitchen and take cookies whenever I want. Or maybe super speed, so I could just run in really fast and take them and run away. Flying would be cool too. Then I could just fly around taking cookies whenever I wanted them. So, who's your favorite superhero? Tell us in the comments. It's the itsy bitsy Spider-Man. He's on patrol, looking for people who need help. First, he's visiting Humpty Dumpty. That's weird. He's usually sitting on this wall. Hmm. Let's go see the old woman who lives in a shoe. Her shoe house is all boarded up. Mrs. Shoe, are you in there? Nothing. Mysterious day in nursery rhyme land. Let's check out little boy Blue. Hmm. I don't see him. I can't find Humpty Dumpty. I can't find the old woman who lives in the shoe. I can't even find little boy Blue. Where is everyone? This is a very strange day indeed. Something must be wrong. My spidey senses are tingling. Wait! That haystack is shaking. Go away! It's just me, Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man. Oh, okay then. Little Boy Blue, what's going on here? Everyone in Nursery Rhyme Land is missing. It's Peter Peter. He's having a tantrum. Oh dear, what happened? Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had a wife and couldn't keep her. Yes, yes, we know that part. When he came home, his wife was gone. And well, he got upset because he couldn't find her. And then he started flying around on a leaf, throwing pumpkins at everyone. Oh, is that what all this orange goo is? Yes! Yuck! Ah! Watch out! Here comes the pumpkin! Help! Somebody help! Look! It's the Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man! What have you done with my wife? How should I know? Whoa! Close one! Looks like your crust is about to crumble. That's not even that funny. So then, Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man pointed past the goblin, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, and said, Hey, there's your wife right now. Peter Peter looked over his shoulder, turned his back to the Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man, which gave Spidey just enough time to spin a web around his feet and string him up in a tree. Safe and sound. Your pumpkin throwing days are over. And just then, from around the side of the tree, came Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater's wife. See, I told you not to worry. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. I told you I was having a lunch with Bo Peep. I see you every Saturday. Oh, yeah. Sum it all up in a rhyming fashion. Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater had a wife and couldn't keep her. Peter's wife went missing one morning, leaving the pumpkin without a warning. His temper couldn't have risen faster, turning the land into a disaster, throwing pumpkins at friends and kin until Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man came swooping in. He spun him up into a tree just in time for his wife to see. So at the end of the day, Peter Peter went back to being just a pumpkin eater. And Itsy Bitsy Spider-Man saved the day so all of Nursery Rhyme Land could laugh and play. Hey there kids, it's time for our brand spanking new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pet ultimate. In today's episode, Drew saves Cool School from himself. Wait, that can't be right. 
It was a totally normal day at cool school. Nikki was just about to give her report on Valentine's Day, but... Hey, someone erased my wiki. I saw Drew do it. <gasps> Say what? Kids, Drew would never do anything like that. I didn't do it. Yeah, huh? I saw you. Except you were wearing a funny looking costume. This sounds fishy, kids. Time for recess! This would give Drew a chance to find the imposter who erased Nikki's wiki. But when he got to the playground, Drew found the swing sets, the slides, and the jungle gym were all gone! It's like they had been erased. Drew went back inside. There was Crafty Carol, and she did not look happy. Oh, there you are. Who, me? Drew, did you erase all of my crafting supplies? No way, I promise. Oh, thank goodness. I didn't think so, but someone said they saw you do it. <laughs> hey, stop it right there, you faker. All of a sudden, kids came pouring out of the cafeteria. Yuck. Ew. Gross. The mysterious villain had erased the lunch menu and all the labels on the food. The lunch lady accidentally served up sloppy joes with grape jelly, onion slices, and cauliflower tacos with liver. Gross! But it's supposed to be pizza day. There he is. That's who done it. No way. I would never mess with pizza day. Then it dawned on Drew. Someone who looked like him was running around erasing everything. The opposite of drawing. It was like he had... An evil twin. My name is Ray, as an eraser. <laughs> You're the one who's been erasing stuff. Yeah, and now I'm gonna erase you. I don't think so, pal. <laughs> hey! What about this? Let's get ready to ru- Give it up, Drew. There's nothing you can draw that I can't erase. Oh no, kids. Has Drew Pendus met his match? A bad guy he can't beat. No way. He can't beat me if he can't catch me. Drew used his super speed shoes to run down the hall and into the library. Miss Booksy, help. I need a book on how to send my evil twin back to his evil planet. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, here's one. <laughs> how to send your evil twin back to his evil planet. Perfect. Boogers. He erased all the pages. Aha! Enjoying your book! Oh, what do you want from me? I want chaos, craziness, destruction! <laughs> well, that's a silly answer. Yeah, what do you really want? I... I just want to be a student in cool school. Well, that makes sense. It is the best school in the universe. That's true. Where I came from, we only had cruel school. And it's not cool at all! Ray told them about cruel school, where everything was the opposite. Instead of good teachers, they had bad ones, like Krabby Carol. Stay away from my glitter. And Captain Hooksy, the cruel school librarian. She used to be a pirate, and now all the books are ripped to shreds. Arg! <laughs> all I want is to stay here with you guys. I'll be good, I promise. They actually considered it. After all, cruel school did sound terrible. But Drew saw that Ray had his fingers crossed behind his back. That's the universal sign that someone is fibbing. Don't worry, I saw that and I have a plan. Drew made a door to cruel school. Oh no, I dropped my penultimate and I rolled out the door. It's my pen now! <laughs> Kids, Ray has the mighty penultimate! Now I can draw whatever I want and take over the world! Hey, wait a second, this pen doesn't work. What's the matter, Ray? I'm drawing a blank. Have a nice day at cruel school, Ray. Yay! Whoa, how'd you do it? Simple. I could tell he really wanted my pen ultimate, so I drew a fake one that didn't have any ink. Ray won't be coming back to cool school anytime soon. Well, we sure hope not. Anyway, the moral of the story, kids, don't go around erasing people's homework and never mess with Drew's pen ultimate. Shout out to Emma Rhodes for giving me the idea to draw speed shoes. They're awesome. Thanks, Emma. So, what did you guys think? Super magical or what? <laughs> Let me know in the comments what your favorite magical story is. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon, guys. Bye.